Kate Stevens. Fiji hot favourites. Tongan International, Willie Lose joins me and always a great deal of expectation when the Fijians play for the first time, Willie. Yeah, I think that uh, everyone's looking forward to seeing what the benchmark is, Tony, and um, we're all looking forward to a good game. So it's Serevi, who once again will be the kingpin for Fiji, and I'm sure a star of the tournament. He starts off, Yolfe up after it quickly, and already they have possession from their own kickoff. Serevi on the ball in centre field. There's the first look at the great step. Support from Lala. Tower now from Luque. They'll build it up again from the back. Keeping numbers on the ball. Danger man Budenbacher out to the right, but Karuba decides to go on his own, and he'll score the first try of the tournament for the Fijians. The big man getting his team's first try. And it came after just 37 seconds. Yeah, well, as you can see, Tony, they're uh, retaining position, and that's key in sevens. Just a nice cut there, and Sharuva just, uh, all he could do was basically catch the ball and run to the line. It's a good way to start. Precision football, too. For the injection of pace and Taruva. They're all quick, they can all play. He's one of the power men. They run the ball from their own kickoff. They've scored a try. Serevi's converted it, and here they go again. Only just going the 10, but uncontested possession there. That's just giving it away. Lala. Now they go back to the right. Taruva, the try scorer, spots another gap, but this time he unloads. Now here's Bunimbaka. Plays for the Leicester Club in England. Yope. Serevi. Step off the left foot, striding through, just looking for a runner. Couldn't quite find one, but he's still got time to switch it right again to Taruva. Nice tackle coming in from Chinese Taipei, who get their hands on the ball for the first time in the game. Huang looking to straighten. Closed down quickly, though. Lin and the spilled pass there. Just trying to do everything a bit too quickly. The referee will play advantage. And I'm sure that's an advantage that's going to pay off there with Melly streaks in in the corner. Chinese Taipei losing possession, just in too much of a hurry to do things. And Melly goes in for the try to make it 12 to nil. Two minutes gone. Serevi puts the kick over. Nearly the yeah, try there's, there's just the finishing, Tony, but uh, Fiji are retaining position, and that's the key to this game. And uh, Taipei didn't touch the ball until two minutes after the kickoff, and uh, they're not using the position that they've been given. And they didn't really give themselves any space on the ball at all when play broke down. It was inevitable that Fiji would score. Their second try, 12 to nil. Here's another restart. With the team, of course, having conceded the try, they receive it. Here's some space opening up now for Huang. Down the middle he goes. He needs support. The gap starting to close up. A keep possession, though. Chance over in the far corner, but Melly got back and made a punishing tackle there. However, they've kept the ball. Yay on it now, but the referee's whistle had gone. Melly got back and absolutely monstered the man on the ball. Wang Tsung Chi. Uh, it looked as though they've kept the hold of possession. I think you saw a little nudge forward there. There he goes. Serevi holding up play on his own goal. Oh, the one-hander across field. That's cocky stuff early on. Now here's Wittenbacher. He can really fly this man. He plays for the Leicester Club in England. And he's going to score his first try of the tournament. A length of the field effort from Marika Wittenbacher. This man... Could well be one of the stars of the tournament. This will be the easiest try he scores, though. Yeah, that's just confidence, Tony, when the Fijians feel that they can move the ball in their own in-goal area. They give it to Vinny Barker, and he's got uh, plenty of toe there. The uh, Chinese Taipei wing is probably wishing he wasn't uh, on the field at the moment. He got himself off the field straight away as Vinny Barker really had a stroll to the line, but watch out for this guy in the tournament. Bags of pace. 
very strong as well. Wunenbacher has been trying to get a work permit to play club rugby in England for Leicester. Hasn't been able to do it so far. Here he is again. He'll back himself to go into the corner too. He steps in field, but effortlessly holding possession up. Switch back to Serevi. There's another one-hander. Didn't get away with it that time. As Huang Si Chung picks it up. Forward pass, unfortunately, for Chinese Taipei. Although I suspect that movement would probably have been cut down any moment there because they were descending on Mei Chiang. There's Tui Kabi coming in with a great hit, Tony, and uh, knocking the ball on. So, another scrum feed. Fijians 19 mil ahead. Serevi. Out into centre field, Taruva. Now, Vunenbaki who switched over to the left. And just hold it up. And they're working it. Keeping numbers on the ball, although if it's squeezed up in centre field. Now the pass over the top. Here's Serevi. Shrugging his way out of the first tackle. Yulpe with the switch. Now here's some pace from Luke Aranavula. Back playing rugby for Fiji after playing here for New Zealand about four years ago. He went to rugby league, came back with the Rugby World Cup last year, and here he is again, playing for Fiji and scoring his first try of the tournament. Very familiar figure to viewers in New Zealand who saw him play for two or three seasons with Counties Manuko. Then he went to league. Here he is, he's all class, this man. And it's just all confidence in it. They just, uh, they just look for the gaps, they just hold the ball up, and... Um, Inevitably, the gap comes, and uh, there's always plenty of support. 26 to nil, the score. Luke scoring the try. Of course, points all important. The teams know what a wee off the gas because points four can come into play later on in the tournament. Now, as we see, some of the minnows they do tend to kick away possession, and that's what Chinese Taipei have done. The chase is pretty good but it's fairly effortless for Serevi, sweeping back inside his own 22. Just wait for the support to arrive. He loves these one-handed passes. Maybe that's going to be his trademark this year. Now it's really starting to open up again for the Fijians. Another try coming up. This is Lala. They just hold it up, wait for the support to arrive, but that's a good determined tackle. I think that time they really did ease off. He needed quick support. It didn't come. And well done, Wang C. Chi, because he got back and made the tackle when it looked like it had try written all over it. It's only the Chinese Taipei guys certainly aren't giving up in the first half here. And um, there won't be any tries, really easy tries given away to the Fijians. Well, the half time hoot is gone, and Fiji well in control against Chinese Taipei, 28 to nil. Like they're getting into gear too. They lead Chinese Taipei 28 to nil as the second half starts. And it'll be Chinese Taipei who kick off. Joel Dumay, the referee, checks. You can see Rokini there, one of the substitutes. Some strong breeze and a bit of a delay with the kickoff. But here's the start of the second half now. And it's Meli who goes up to take it. Serevi on the 22. The switch, Melly getting just a bit too complicated there, a bit too casual, took his eye off the ball. Luke, in fact, making the mistake. Yeah, they're probably trying to push things a little bit too much. They, they, they probably want to just settle down a little and um, just get a feel for the ball and uh, the atmosphere. A chance for a scrum feed and a good attacking position for Tony's Taipei. But that's not good ball from the scrum could pay for it but again Fiji getting the dropsies as well 26 to nil still the half-time score almost a minute gone second half great pressure there from Serevi and it's not very often that you see the Fijians putting the ball down they've got great hand skills and uh, I'm sure that they'll want to work on that over the next few days well the Chinese Taipei backs will move out towards the left while the scrum's under real pressure and Taruva picks it up and he's away they won't lay a hand on him. He'll get a second try and look at Taruva. And go back to the scrum for that one because they were absolutely monstered, the Chinese Taipei forwards. And it was a gap that opened up for Enoki Taruva. 
But as you said, Tony, that's where the key was. The scrum, Fijians put the pressure on there. It's Taipei feed, they couldn't retain possession. And uh, the rest was just a matter of picking the ball up, running to the line. Don't they look grateful in flight? He slid nicely through the gap and just easing up as he heads towards the line. Knocks it down. It's already gone over and it's 31 to nil. So, so far the benchmark has been at 33 with the kick over. Now here's the restart. Serevi. Ball goes over the touchline as Melly chases. Let's see if Melly Taipei can work something from the line out. It's correcting the score. The scoreboard says 33. Back it's 35. It's confirming that now. Scrambly stuff from the line out. Fiji have it again. Look out. Here's trouble. Strong burst in centre field. This is good in Baka. Came in field looking for some work. Get another one. All happening a bit too easily for them at the moment. In fact, it's uh, Maraiwai, the substitute, who's come on and picked up that try. Substituting for Gunnambaka. He'll pick up his first try. There it is, the Fijians just pushing the ball. And Maraiwai showing the big fend. These guys are incredibly strong and um, they're looking great. This first day. If you don't go around the ankles, you're in big trouble. The tackler tried to stay up and take him high and that just opened it up for the fin 42 to nil we've had 259 nil so far tonight and the Fijians top that they've got about three and a half minutes to do it now well on the way here's another try Kawaki coming up he's another one of the substitutes he'll get an easy try and Fiji really starting to pile it on now it's effortless for them Tony, this is the Fijian that we've come to expect. Straight from the kickoff, they win it there. And then it's just a simple pass inside, and there's always plenty of support if he wasn't able to get to the line as well. So Fiji really starting to put the heat on now. Chinese Taipei have defended well in the first half and most of the second half, but probably just the fatigue factor starting to kick in now. Well, Tawaki's try has been converted by Serevi. It's 47 to nil now. Serevi looking for a cheeky kick off there, but they're just waiting for a substitute to come onto the field. Chang Wee Chung wants to get on for Chinese Taipei and get amongst it. And they just wait for Mai Qian Xian to come off. Conversion going over to make it 49 to nil. It was 47 after the try. Here's I went ahead with the cheeky kick anyway. <laughs> Put him back and picked it up. He'll get an easy try. Well, they telegraphed it, and Chinese Taipei still weren't awake to it. Another one for Marika Bunimbaka. Mr. Tony, that try had Sarubi written all over. He's just, uh, he's just a magician, just loves doing things like that, especially here in Hong Kong. And uh, he's a big winger. Able to read it, pick it up, step inside, and then a nice run to the line. They're really looking like the champions that they were last year as well. You just see on the jersey there, Philippians 4-13. That's the catch cry that I believe carried them to victory last year. 54 to nil, and they made an impressive start to the tournament, the Fijians. There's Yope on the ball. Doing what he does best, just making his physical presence felt, holding it up for the runners. Didn't quite happen that time because Lin Yite got in and slapped it away. Went over the touchline and Kawake will throw. That's great defense from Chinese Taipei. It's only getting in there and disrupting the ball. So Kawake on the left, right on halfway. Loose ball. Fiji swoop. Serevi runs. Power outside him. Plenty of runners available too, and they're going to get another one. It's Rockini under the black dot, and he gets another one. And the Fijians heading for the biggest score of the night so far. The conversion by Serevi makes it 61 to nil. That's the biggest score we've seen so far tonight. 
are running right now, Willie. Yeah, just seeing the last parts, but here it's just power, support, and uh, that's Fiji's strength. Is that there's always someone there. I don't think the China Taipei team has helped themselves. They don't seem to be operating a sweeper. No one's really game to be picking things up at the back. Trying to pick up the mess. Whenever they get their hands on the ball, they don't seem to have very much time to move then either. Little chance out on the left for Pan, but he wasn't able to hold it up because he just got monstered to the ground. You really need the strength and size on your side to be able to hold it up. But they had no strength, no way of catching the Fijians tonight, Chinese Taipei. The hoot has gone, the referee will call one more play in the game. They'll have a scrum on the far side for the knock forward. Fiji will get one more turn on the ball. Surevi. On the loop. Left it behind him. Rare mistake from Waisale Surevi, but it's been an impressive start by the Fijians. The world champions have beaten Chinese Taipei by 61 to nil. Chinese Taipei, he'll control this match. And a lovely warm afternoon here in Hong Kong. Temperatures rising in the crowd. As we see the championship favourites for the second time in the tournament. They had a big win over Chinese Taipei. Willie Lo say they look awesome. Yeah, they did. They've started the competition well yesterday and uh, they'll be keen just to carry on from there, not use too much energy in these games and be ready to fire by tomorrow. Here's the little maestro, Serevi. Yope, the big hit man in the forwards. Keeps his feet nicely there. Rokini with the run. He's a big, strong man, and he's got the first try. Well, 33 seconds on the board, and Fiji get their first try through Simone Rocchini. Here we see on the replay, Srivi just fed it out. Big guys. Jopé to Akabi, he just feeds on. Here we go, that man, Rocchini, and he's got plenty of power, hasn't he? He just looks fantastic on the fly. Is the kick from Serevi no success but with a minute on the clock Fiji already up by five to nil is Rokini along with Yope the other the hard yards men they take the direct approach and look to make the punches up the middle certainly worked there now here's Serevi with the restart see how he gets it nice and high so his forwards can get up after it couldn't take it cleanly no, that came off a Papua New Guinea handed so Tawaki will get the throw on the far side plenty of elevation on those kickoffs it's an area that New Zealanders excel at as well it's just a, a means of regathering possession that's a move the New Zealanders tried as well it hasn't come off quite so well for the Fijians in fact they've coughed it up but they get it straight back there's Turuva Serevi slows it down Turuva again with the run switch to Bunimbaka he was one of the stars of the show last, last night. And the Fijians get a penalty. It's only great defence there by Papua New Guinea. They're being spread, but they are working hard off the ball as well. Certainly very determined. Here's Serevi. Funimbaka is taking his time about picking the ball up. Serevi calling the shots, calling the runners. Here's Taruva. Will he back himself to go for the corner? No, just holding it up. Waiting for the support to arrive. There's some ferocious hits coming in from Papua New Guinea. And they've managed to turn it over to Kunai. Wins the scraps of possession. They'll try to work the ball out of their own 22. The kick ahead. This is Willie Arthur with the kick. And Milkari with the chase. The Fijians just knock it over the touchline on the far side. That's great footwork there. There we see him just stepping, beating three guys. The chip ahead probably went the wrong way, Tony, and he probably wanted to go straight downfield as opposed to out to the right. It's really Arthur it was, the man with the chip and chase. And get another chance with ball from the liner. That's a nice pass to Milkari, the captain. It's a bit of confidence starting to come into their game now, Papua New Guinea. And tackles like that might knock it out of them fairly smartly. Here's Serevi. Yope. Big switch, Rokini. 
The man with the ginger hair, he's going to set it up outside him for Vunim Bucket. No, they're getting across very quickly to make the tackles. That was Kevin Vitolo. They forced the little error there. And Papua New Guinea competing well here against the tournament favourites. Tony, Kevin Vitolo, he, uh, he's certainly making the tackles today and he's making them felt, as we see here on the replay. Just that little knock on, so the ref bringing it back for the Papua New Guinea scrum. Willie Arthur with the clearance. BG press hard though. They come up quickly, make the tackles, pick up the spill ball. And here they come again. It's Yope with the handoff. Now Sarevi. Scampers around the outside of one. Steps inside another. Makes it look so easy to Waki with the try. Well, to Waki with the finish. But put that down to a bit of Serevi magic. There's Tawaki, but as Tony had said, Serevi the master here in Hong Kong. This is just a little bit of his magic. He's got all the tricks. Just a quick step there, little outside step, then just setting it up. And the big guy, Tawaki, and underneath the post to finish it off. The try makes it 12 mil with the conversion. Of minutes to go first half. Yes, sirevi has got more tricks than David Copperfield. There's another good restart too. Yope to Nkambe picks up the loose ball, but they get a penalty, Papua New Guinea, but a shoving off the ball there to make life easier. But this man, Yope, the big power forward. Goodness, the referee's bringing them back. Been a little pedantic, some of the refereeing at this tournament. Some of the refs not quite entering into the, the spirit of things by just being too precise with their rulings. I mean, who cares where the, the, the tap was really taken if it was a metre wide of the mark? Here's Rokini with the pass outside to Taruva, big and strong, and this man is very, very fast. That's Marika Vunimbaka, he gets the try. This man plays professional rugby in England for the Leicester Club. He's a danger man. And he's a try-scoring machine. Here we see, how many times have we seen this in Hong Kong? Sarevi just holding up the defence. He got a nice loop there. Then it's just a matter of draw and pass. Men to burn. Here we go. Draw him in. Feed it out to the speed of Vinny Barker. He knows where the try line is. This guy started the tournament yesterday well. And there's no doubt that he will finish it well as well. Vinny Barker, who signed to play alongside Serevi at the Leicester Club. He's had a few problems with his work permit because he's not played 15 aside rugby for Fiji. That makes it a bit more difficult. So this is why he's had no problem getting a clearance to play here with the Fijian team. And it looks like he's going to be in the action again here from the kickoff. Here he is, Bunambaka. Going to have the defence on. Little show of the ball. Now the hold up. Here's Serevi. Yope with the switch. More clever play from Yope. The one hand of those is forward. So they'll come back for the scrum. Ooh, a bit of a set two between number seven, Kevin Vitole, and the big Fijian. Certainly no love lost out there, Tony, between the two South Pacific countries. Hoot has gone for half time, and so it's 17 0 Fiji. So Fiji restart and get dragged straight back to halfway. That's a mistake. They lead 17-0, but maybe a chance here for Papua New Guinea to create something. No, not with passing and handling like that. Willie Arthur nudging it forward. Referee plays a bit of an advantage. Nothing doing, and so the Fijians will feed this ground. Yeah, Tony, Papua New Guinea probably just want to settle down a little bit. Playing against the world champions, everyone's a bit nervous, but they've just got to keep the ball, pass it around, wait for the gaps to appear, because they will appear and then use their size, their strength, and their speed. Julius Kroanti comes on for Papua New Guinea. Ian Lechlech comes off. Not that he ever got his hands on the ball during the game. Now here's Rokini again. Trying to set it up for Wunenbaka outside him. And bring it back the other way. Now Rokini commits the tacklers. Let's see the Fijians do this too often. They like to keep it alive. Taruva goes in to play halfback. Rips it away, but that's a nice little steal, is it? No, the referee says you can't do that. 
came offside. See a hand coming through there just as Inoki Taruva looked to clear it away. Well, here's an intercept by Julius Croanti, the substitute for Papua New Guinea. Not really able to make the most of it, but they've still got their hands on the ball. And so hope remains. Here's Nakari, the captain, speeding away and creating the try as it for Pomoso. No, loses it just short of the line. There's a dive, but it was knocked forward. Well, Tony, how the crowd would have loved to have seen that try. That was fantastic skills by the Papua New Guinea side. There they are, just that last pass just going forward there. Just kept them unable to regather the ball. Yes, it was Robert Nilkari who just knocked the ball forward as he looked to scoop it up and get over for a try that would have brought the crowd to its feet. Indians look to break through the captain. Makes the tackle to Ruva in support. Vunambaka. Now back the other way. Rokini with the pass. Maybe a power out wide. And the big man's away, is he? No. He got back. Well done, Papua New Guinea. And Yope with a simple error there. Well, Fiji leading by 17 to nil, but mistakes in this game that will not happy, make them happy. Yeah, Yope Tuikabi there probably looking at the man instead of the ball. Fijians don't make many mistakes, especially simple ones like that, Tony. I wonder whether the Fijians might have their minds on things that lie ahead tomorrow. They have to scrap that ball away, only to lose it again. Got a turnovers now. Here's your beat. Nice hands from the Fijians. Serevi, Taruva, straightens, gets to halfway. Rockini. Now here's the chance on the right. And finally the passes of Stuck and Toaki gets the try. That's a second for the game. And the Fijians out to 22 nil. Yeah, Tony put that try down to Taruva. He's the man there that straightened it. Drew and pass. Then it was just a matter of just two on one. And Tawaki was at the end of the chain. Just the end of it there. Nice catch. He's in full flight and he takes it. But even in scoring that try, the Fijians hardly look to get out of second gear. They're making the substitute now. As you see Tawaki just dotting the ball down. Looks like they're bringing two or three off. And some fresh legs on. And fresh long legs too. Those of Luke Eranavula at the bottom of the screen. And Luke says, I'll chase the first kickoff. It's a hand on it too, but it's picked up by Papua New Guinea. Tollop can't hold the pass. The referee said, knock forward both ways. First knock on came from Fiji, just swatted forward by Luke. And so Papua New Guinea will feed the scrum. Yeah, there we see the replay there. Just unable to hold it, Joe Tulip. And uh, I've got to say, the Papua New Guinea defence has been great, Tony. Fiji gets a free kick, taken quickly. Um, to centre field. And again, the hand's not good. That time it was Luke. And the referee brings them all the way back again. Says you weren't back 10, Papua New Guinea. Joaquini. And take the tap. Outside the 22. Serevi looking for a runner. Nice little double around. And here's the chance for the big man to score the try. That's the replacement, Maraiwai. He's just come onto the field. He gets another try, 29 to nil now. Here it is, obviously a set move. There's the magician again. Players running different angles, different lines. And then someone just coming back straight. And there he is, Marai Wai, on the field and scoring the try. He's probably the biggest player in the Fijian team, and they're all pretty big apart from Serevi. Bringing on some fresh power and immediately paying off with that try. 31 to nil now with a successful kick. You can see Hendrix Kafua coming onto the field now 
for Papua New Guinea. He's definitely in the running for the haircut of the tournament as well. Carl Tanana might be in front. Sarevi with the restart. Man in front. Well, normally he's so good from the kickoff, Sarevi, but they've botched a couple today. Papua New Guinea. Eager to score a try in this game. I'm sure they'd get a great deal of satisfaction. They've come close, but not close enough. Maybe this time. Tukunai with the pass. Nakari, the captain, has his pass intercepted by Vunambaka. So another possibility goes begging for Papua New Guinea. Got it back, though. All a bit of a mess, though. They get a penalty. But they were all bunched up in the middle of the field. The hoot is gone. The referee's going to let them have a crack at it. Really remember any injuries in the game, but he's going to let play carry on. No, in fact, he called up for a scrum there rather than a penalty. But in it goes. Tomoso. It's up the loose ball. Oh, intercept from Rukini. He's away. Brave chase from Hendricks Kafur, but he's not going to stop Rokini getting another try to seal it for Fiji. Here we see it, Tony, just an opportunist try. Rokini at the right place at the right time. But that's all about pressure, and he put the pressure on, and he deserved the try. He's probably been the standout player for Fiji in this game. Simone Rokini, along with Serevi, of course. Hendricks Kafur got across with the attempted tackle, but he couldn't stop him. Kick misses. That's the end of the game. So not always at their best, Fiji. A bit scrappy for their liking, I'd imagine. But they have won it by 36 to nil over Papua New Guinea. Be the referee. And it'll be Fiji to kick off. Fiji against Argentina. Serevi with the start. And Argentina with early possession. If they can get in amongst it here as Contemponi runs it up towards the 10 meter mark, but they've given away already. Serevi on halfway. Rocchini with the big run. Good solid tackle though from Argentina. Now they have to try and scramble it away from their own 22. Running out of space though down the left wing side is Jose Orengo. And so Fiji get a line out throw. They've looked good so far, Justin Marshall. Fiji and I think Australia are impressive as well. Yeah, the three big sides that look to be really taking this tournament by control. Interesting to see how Fiji are going to go. New Zealand struggled with their last pull down. It's Yope with the throw and on the receiving end too, Rokini in centre field. Committing two or three tacklers and so winning a penalty there. Oh, Sarevi gets involved in a little bit of push and shove. Vunimbaka goes in to help. It's a bit of a David Goliath effort there. You can see Pierre Gentili going in there. It was he who incurred the wrath of Waisali Sarevi. It's a wild look in those eyes. It's like the old school days when someone steals your lollipop, isn't it? Sort it out, I'm sure. No one steals Sarevi's lollipop and gets away with it. He had plenty of support there, the little man, from his big teammates. Yeah, Gentile gets a bit of a lecture. Don't know what the referee's Spanish is like. But Rocchini will take the tap. Everyone lined up away to the left. There's Serevi, always the first receiver, switches it away to the right. That came unstuck badly for the Fijians. Still no score in the game after two minutes. Meli, a man dropping the ball there. Well, Argentina have shown themselves to be a plucky side and they play the sevens game well Fiji will have to work hard for a victory here just as New Zealand did against Korea early on Argentina scrambling it clear up to the 22 they go still inside their own half where they've been for the whole game so far they'll get a scrum feed games hardly started really has it Justin Smear Manet Mar I think uh, that one word that I'm looking meandering for. Thanks very much, Tony. This is a tough word to get out. Might go for something easy. Just coasting along at the moment, this game. Another scrum on the 22. And it'll 
be Manuel Contemponi. Feed it. They've got it back. Gets it away to his brother. A oh, bit of gang tackling there from the Fijians deep inside the 22. Argentina have done well to hang on to it. And Pierre Gentile hits it up with a bit of feeling there. Now they look to break from out of their 22. The kick ahead and the chase is on. So Rebi's going back to the Fijians. Flying after it is Alvarez. Bit of a scramble. He's picked it up. So Rebi makes the tackle though. He does that so well. He gets back in defence. Sweeping up and Argentina are penalised. Well, he's not just a great attacking player. It looked like Alvarez was away there, but look at Cerevi. Yeah, all over him like a rash, really. Cerevi, plenty of pace. Oh, intercept here from Contemponi. He hands it off and they get the try. It's Alvarez. Hey, it's our lollipop, man. Well, he's a happier man now than he was a few minutes ago when he was involved in a bit of push and shove with Waisali Sarevi. Contemponi, he made the intercept on that very adventurous pass from Melli. And there's the try scorer. Pierre Gentili, in fact, who got over for the try. And Argentina hit the front. Well, like New Zealand, BG's slow to start and conceding the first try. Be interesting to see what the Fijians can come up with now. Might spark them into life. Well, Gustavo Pierre Gentile is really fired up for this match, as we've already seen. And those eyes will be flashing even more now after that try that put Argentina in front. And New Zealand conceded an early try against Korea. Fiji have done likewise. And Argentina should be able to pick that up. They do. Chance down the middle, too. That was Orengo. Here's Beraldi, the captain. He's got support. Felipe Contemponi, one of the brothers in this side. They've got it away through Duran. Support from Baraldi. They're keeping the ball nicely. Oh, what a lovely bit of soccer skill from Contemponi, but the referee's pinged it back. Oh, my goodness me. He's given a penalty to Argentina. Don't these referees know about the advantage law? There was a try there for Argentina. It's a beautiful bit of soccer skill from Felipe Contemponi. What on earth was he doing giving a penalty? Hopefully Argentina can make amends for that mistake from the referee. They worked the move. Fiji start to crisp up their tackles. Now the referee's given a scrum feed to the Fijians. Well, that could be a crucial moment in the game, that. That's very unfortunate. So the Fijians have got a few problems here. There's only a minute to go in the first half. They're down by 7-0, to nil, but they should be down by more than that. Argentinians need to keep the pressure on, keep the Fijians down here. They don't need them to break out and score just before half-time. If they could go in 7-0 no up, leading into the second half, it'll give them a lot of confidence. Point's just been made. He did go into touch, but I don't think he was in touch when he made contact with the ball. Now the Fijians try and build it from inside the 22. Bunimbaka, the flyer. The defence has got him, though. Scragged him to the ground. Argentina looking for the turnover. They get the penalty. He was held up. Now Argentina take it quickly. They know that Fiji were in attack oh. mode. <laughs> Pierre Gentili hits it up again. He's a man possessed this afternoon. 7-0 the score. The referee telling the Fijians to get back. Half-time almost upon us. What are the Fijians going to do to try and settle things down because at the moment they look just a little bit rattled their, their attacking choices haven't been all that good and Argentina showed the ability to stretch them well, they've chosen to kick for touch instead of take the quick tap they must have some sort of planned move off this line out it'd be great for the Argentinians to go into this game with another try on the board it's 7-0 to Argentina time almost up in the first half Argentina have a throw to the line out he wants the man to go back Beraldi wins it and the Argentinians look to work that move that Justin Marshall was talking about can't do it though now the Fijians can counter but Cerevi can't well he could initially have a few problems but he picked the ball up 
Got it up to the 22. Now the referee's whistle's gone for half time. So Serevi, of all people, dropping the ball. Sums up the effort for Fiji in the first half. And Argentina, to the surprise of everyone in the stand, lead by 7-0. Starts with Argentina leading Fiji by seven to nil, and with an early possession too for Arengo. The supporters there, they've got a head of steam up the Argentinians. They try the kick ahead, oh, that's cleverly taken in by Serevi. Wurenbacher, Fiji going back into the 22. Now Meli and Erin Avula combine on the right. This is Rokini looking dangerous now here, Fiji. Rokini with the run down the right hand flank. Will he have the gas to go all the way? Fires the pass in field. Play on, says the ref. Must be a try coming up on the left, but the pass has gone to an Argentinian hand. Felipe Contemponi goes back, rescues his team. The captain, Baraldi, goes in to try and rip it away. But a slaps, and there he comes out with the jersey hooded over his head, and they belt it away to touch. Hard to see why they did that, Argentina. There's our man, Gustavo Pierre Gentili again. Great defence from the Argentinians. A big breakout from the Fijians but they all just chased really, really hard, and finally the intercept, well done. And Argentina still leading 7-0, Fiji. Got some work to do here as Yope prepares to throw to the line-out. They win it, Yope comes around. Now Serevi in centre field, sums up the opposite. Oh, what a lovely little dummy from Waisali Serevi. That's the magic of the man they call the master of the sevens game. He makes it look so easy, he bamboozled the entire Argentinian team with that one. Adds the extras, and they're back on level terms. A bit of deception here. Serevi waited for the man to wrap around, didn't need him. And he's gone. Well, Eric Rush is one who likes to say that if you want to stop Fiji, you have to stop this man. And they just opened the door. And Fiji back in the game. Still some work to do. As Argentina again put bodies on the line. To get the ball back. Just wonder whether the Argentinians are looking a little anxious to speed things up at the moment. Here's a chance though for Contemponi. Infield towards Pierre Gentili it goes. They've lost position, have they? <laughs> Pierre Gentili goes in to try and claim it. But the Fijians have got numbers back behind the ball. This is Serevi. Breaks again. That's halfway. Oh, he's off. Now, Villain's chasing him, and he's got pace. But there's a clever handoff to Bunambaka, and he's going to score the try. The brilliance of Serevi again. Well, Serevi's been really quiet so far in this tournament. Seems to be just waiting for the big games, and he knows how to lift his side. He's really inspirational. Here we see he takes the gap, accelerates through strong as well and the pace away he goes nice little campesi step so to speak and the support looms up he, he he's got fiji well and truly back into the game so wooden barker scores the try fiji with the conversion out to 14 7 and i bet they relieved the smiles are there smiles of relief after a shaking start to the game just get the feeling too that there's wooden barker the try scorer got the look in his eyes at the moment too but I just think Argentina they probably needed to just slow things down a little bit I think they got the sniff of an upset victory in their nostril and that's why Sali Serevi the man who's taken advantage of that's a bit of disorganization in the Argentinian race <laughs> Meli's off Kawaki's on for Fiji and Duncan Forrester comes on for Manuel Contemponi for Argentina Argentina's try Something smart from the kickoff. Doesn't come out smart though, because Argentina have the tap kick on halfway. And to Tony to commit a couple of tacklers there. This is Pierre Gentili again. Got a nice step. He's flung to the ground. About 10 metres short of the 22. Loose ball and a penalty against Argentina. So Fiji slowly taking control, and it's because this man's taken over the running of the game. He can dance and play in the orchestra, Waisali Serevi, and here he is making another try. This is a beauty for Yuppie. 
he finishes it but like all three of the tries they've scored the man to create it was Serevi wonderful pass here from Serevi takes the ball to the man nice little flick well, Yuppe had the run to the line but Serevi in this game we've seen why he's rated the greatest exponent of the sevens game there he is he's got it all every trick in the book plus a few more that he's made up himself and Yuppe gets the benefit of it he scores the try Fiji up to 21-7 after a shaking start you can see him doesn't put a lot of effort into his kicks at goal but he always seems to be able to nail them this is a phenomenal performance by Serevi Justin showing his class Tony Argentina knock it down but it's all coming apart for them a game that started with so much promise that it's a familiar scoreline now pick up a loose one on the far side it's Duncan Forrester the replacement now they look to swing it back towards the right but they're going it alone now going in ones whereas earlier on in the game they were getting numbers behind the ball and they were showing patience got a bit carried away with the thought of an upset win and this little man here Serevi has made them pay for it a scrappy play here and it's handed ball back to Arengo for Argentina field to Luque hack ahead from Baraldi he could get a try here it'll be an easy one all he's got to do is pick it up and the captain Pedro Baraldi scores the try for Argentina unfortunately for them it's come too late the time almost up on the clock the kick will go over and make it 21 to 14 whether they'll have a chance to restart play although out of shot we've seen the arrival of the touch judge on the field the touch judge in the might have had could have advised the referee on an early decision in this game that went against Argentina the, the try will stand the conversion goes over 21 to 14 will he allow play to continue because if he does it still gives Argentina a chance touch judge obviously just wanted to get his face on TV again Tony <laughs> Baraldi with the hack ahead he gave a penalty on halfway so that was an interesting oh, call and it could give Argentina the chance to level here it comes go boy the try Arango scores oh. <laughs> Beggs might take the drop kick the kick to come Argentina took the quick tap Pierre Gentile missed it but Arango picked it up sliced through the gap Two missed tackles. Wonderful try. Are they allowed to uh, place kick, Tony? No, it has to be a drop kick. Let's have a look at it now. Forrest is the man who will take the kick at goal to bring the scores level. He's only been on the field a minute. quarter-final draw fantastic result. we've got a tough job ahead here they have a really tough hold on to your seat this is going to be all time the quarter-final between Australia and Fiji really good tackling from the Australians move it up the right Fiji still in possession and now into tackle tackle goes into touch Mali driven over the sideline by Ugay getting across to make the tackle on this Rapungay driving in low and hard on his fellow countrymen playing for Australia one of the stars of the tournament big Bruce Rapungay the line out to take place Rapungay taps it down comes back to Moss now onto Mandruziak Mandruziak eyeing a bit of a gap accelerates through taken in the tackle by Tawaki and Fizi has it now he retains possession nicely up to John Moss looks for the support hit hard in the tackle by Rockini but the penalty against Fiji offside. Rockini, the man, penalised. 
Campisi. Show the ball coming across field. Nice run here by Cameron Pither. Goes to the ground. Looking for it. Nalutu. Now Campisi. A little switch with Nalutu. Now they straighten it up through the middle. Good work here from Kelleher. Laid back for Nalutu. And the pass out to Campisi with Raunge in support. Campisi shows the ball up to Raunge. Strong stands on his feet. Look for the support. He's got it from Nalutu. Is this going to be the first try? Oh, great defence back there by Fiji. And they come away with it. They break up field. Through. This is excellent work from the Fiji as they've recovered so well from that. That was so dangerous early. Now the big pass back across the Yope. He can't gather it in. Daruva goes back for it just short of the line. Australia have robbed this one away. Pippa has it on the ground. And the whistle goes. Knock on against Fiji. Hamish, what a fantastic start to the game. Both teams willing to run the ball. Here we are, Australia. How close was that? Oh, that's a fantastic start. Scrum fed by Moss. Oh, great defence there from Saravi. Coming through with a bit of a spear tackle. And now Fiji have it clear. Down this left-hand side of the field through Tawaki. Tawaki back into Rokini. Rokini giving chase to Lutu. Rokini has the ball. He's strong in the tackle. Waits for the support. Oh, he can't find the man. Now he gets the pass up to Daruva. And the pass back in field goes the way of Tawaki. And Turuva, and Uncle Turuva will get the try for Fiji. So it's from one end of the field to the other. Plenty of ebb and flow. The Fijians a little bit rattled at the start. But once they got the opportunity, they got the ball. Fijians full in flight. Here he goes. He pins his ears back. He decides to have the last guy on. Held up there. And ever present, there's always a Fijian in, in support. One more time, the inside pass. And just look at him, look at him, look at him go. And for the try, to Ruba. Look at Ruba. It's a good work there by Tawaki. To Ruba, the try scorer. The conversion from Sarevi successful. 7 0 Fiji over Australia in this Cup quarter final. One of the big clashes of the tournament so far. Australia have been impressive throughout. Fiji, that pickup against Argentina, which left them on the same side of the draw as Australia and New Zealand. Just start down to Rutungay. Throws it behind himself to Cameron Pither. Picked up by Moss. Gives it up to Kelleher. Campisi, just out from his own line. Cuts the pass wide out to Nalutu. Now Nalutu with a bit of space. He stands his ground. Gets it back across to Kelleher. Tries to strike and does so. Passes to nobody. It's towed through by Hunumbaka and try. Very easy for Big Hunumbaka. Put this try down to pressure. It was just the pressure of the whole Fijian sevens that were up there. They were all in a the line. They were all composed. The communication was there. They all knew who had each other. The Australians looking for someone that's fair. Winnebark is on, hands, chips it ahead, and that's a fantastic five points for Fiji. And Sarevi successful with the conversion. Yes, Winnebarka, nice little chip through too, and he put the ball through. Good skills there. They are really the total team. The real shebang when it comes to sevens rugby, Fiji. 14-0 they lead, five minutes gone in the first half of this cup semi-final from the 1998 Hong Kong Sevens. Revy. The restart. Down to Rutungay. Rutungay trying to get away from the attentions of Rokini. Can't do so. But knocked forward by Fiji. So, so Willie, they had that lead by 14 points to nil. As we just look at this one here, as Rutungay got the pass back in field. Attempted pick up and pass. Went astray. Scrum. Moss. Mandruziak. Campisi turns it back into little John Moss. Back to Campisi. Campisi into Kelleher. Kelleher tries to straighten it. Campo flicks it over his head to Rutungay. He can't control it. It's all over the place. The Australian's going back at a rate of knots. And in the end, the scrum awarded to Fiji. 
And it's yesterday we saw the Australians go forward. They're big forwards, we're getting them forward, and that's why the backs were able to categorise on that. Today they're just simply passing the ball around. Yeah, they're just not muscling it up, are they? Australia have turned over possession four times. Now it's Taruva. Try score it. Taken on a good tackle by Fither and foot to the ground. It's not going to come out of there, says referee Carl Spannenberg. We'll have a scrum for Australia. They've still got time left, about a minute left in this first half of the Cup semi-final. Well, the winner of this will face either New Zealand or Argentina. Samoa looking very good on the top side of the draw. And tidy from the scrum. Like the penalty goes against Fiji. So Australia a chance to relieve some of the pressure, which has seen Fiji go out to 14 points to nil. Moss up to Campisi. Shows it to Mandruziak. Now what can Campisi cook up from the back out? Across to Maluto and he goes without the football. That was probably the first time that we've seen Campo get involved. And he is dangerous. Look at this guy. He's all class. Campo's all class. Everybody hangs off him. He breaks there. Two on one feeds him. Now look, we're just unable to hold on to that last pass. It wasn't the greatest of passes. Half time, Fiji 14, Australia nil. 14 nil to Fiji over Australia. Sarevi with the start down to Campisi, just out from his own goal line. Picks it back to Moss. Across to Cameron Bither, who tries to muscle it up close to his own line. Picked up by Campisi. He flicks it on to little John Moss, and he's engulfed by the defence. Whack him to the ground. Whistle goes. Probably not forward in there by Fiji, I think. Hamish, I've got to say, the Argentinians used their big forwards yesterday to run at the Fijians. The Fijians didn't like it. And all the Australians are doing are just palming it off. They're just put, giving someone in a worse position the ball. Moss feeds it. Talk about a second row feed. Free kick given. Moss will need some support. Well, it goes into the head of one of the Fijian players. They clearly work back to 10. They'll have another opportunity. Space here for Mandruziak. He's got support to his right. Gives the pass, but it's not the greatest of passes. Callahan can't control it. Yes, he does. Gets down on the ground. Puts it behind his back to Mandruziak. He'll wait for the support. Now he's got it from Big Cameron Pither. Tries to turn it back and field, but it's taken away by Fiji. Sarevi. Wait for this man. A step, another step. A little goose step, a stutter. And then he looks for the support out to the right. Has it from Tawaki. Tawaki, so much control from these Fijians. There's the big cutout wide from Sarevi. Vunit Mbaka up over halfway, puts the pedal to the medal. The support out here, Tawaki, but it's with Sarevi at the moment. He's taken in the tackle by Moss, put on the ground. The Ruva, it's the pass up to Yope. They flick it wide to Melai. Far side of the field. The tackle made. Is it in touch? Not yet. Still play on, and now it goes into touch. Hamish, that's fantastic ball movement from the Fijians. And once again, it's that man, Sarevi, isn't it? Everybody just hangs off him. You don't know what to do when he's got the ball because he can just turn a nothing situation into seven points. Change for the Australians. Andrew Plasto coming on for Cameron Pither. Maybe he can inject some much-needed power into the Australian forward effort as it is in sevens. Ruttengay wins it. Down for Moss, Mandruziak, Campisi. Campisi to Mandruziak on the double route. Nalutu eyes a bit of a hole. Rick Nalutu into the clear. Now has he got the pace? He's got support on the outside. Kelleher, Kelleher back to Nalutu. Ruttengay, Ruttengay still going. Leaves it behind him. Campisi up in support. He can't claim it. It's picked up by Nalutu. Flicks it behind him, but that's going to go forward. So the Fijians will have a defensive scrum, but that was exciting stuff from Australia. But Fiji back on defence, they gathered their thoughts and got back there to cover that. Now, Lizzie, there he is, running strong, gets support there, feeds it out to Kelleher. Everyone's in support. Big right go there, flicks it back, camp easy, unable to hold it. And this is where it all breaks down there, with the forward movement of the ball. That's from the Lutu. Trying to keep the ball alive desperately, Australia. Now he signals time on. 
right on their own line, Serevi. Okay, the guess out from their own line. Great run cutting up here. Fiji break out. And this is going to be all the way for Wunenbaka. No, Maraiwai. Maraiwai runs virtually the length of the field. Inoki Maraiwai, the try scorer. Fiji and fans up on their feet. Flags are going. Stadium is erupted. And there is the try scorer, Inoki Maraiwai. Put this try down to that magician, the Fijian captain, Surevi. Conversion successful from Surevi. There it is. There's that goose step. Draws Campisi, puts him into the gap, and the rest of the Fijian boys were standing back on the try line saying, Go, you good thing, go. And did he go? Marawai coming on at halftime with a fresh set of, set of legs and he just belted it. They start Fiji well in control here, 21 points to nil. Masto has it. Goes to the ground on the 10 meter line, Greg Gorski. And he had a huge game. Some of their earlier performances. But not wanted for the greater part of the semi of this quarterfinal. I was surprised he wasn't picked because I thought that he was one of the standout players in this. A couple of minutes to go. Field, Stitch Bina, Mark Stitch Bina. Campisi on the double around with Greg Wilski. Here's Ratungay. Ratungay! Shows the pace and just draws away from Serevi Ratunga around underneath the post. The man who hails from the same village as Manasa Imbari, a little gold mining village, Tabua, and they'll be enjoying that. Bruce Ratunga, ball in hand, and look at him move. He is just fantastic on the fly. Brings it around to improve the position to give them the seven points. Turns around, has a look, has a smile at his countrymen. Eighth try in the tournament, and that makes him the top of the bunch. Bruce Rapungay, top try scorer. Just over a minute to go here. Fiji 21, Australia 7. It'll be all too late. Can they pull back 14 points at that time? Huge ask. Tapped down by Rapungay but crucially doesn't go the 10 meters and that's just a straight turnover it becomes effectively a free kick back on halfway the off bay has it shows it one way gets his hands through the tackle they straighten it down the left now australia rub it away nalutu has it he's got support here trying to free the pass knocked out gregorski has it he's going no way though taken by rockini in the tackle and the scrag to the ground Luna Umbaka in on Ratungay. Great strength there shown by Grigorski, but that movement came from the tackle of Campisi. People say he can't tackle, but he was able to make that tackle and get the turnover. Grigorski, Campisi quick hands to Nalutu. Cuts it wide to Ratungay. Now looking to step away, trying to, but scragged into touch. Just didn't have the pace to get away from Luna Mbaka. Barker on the outside, unable to keep the ball free and taking its touch. Line out. Thrown in by Tawaki, tap down for Australia. Moss across to Campisi. Campisi knocked down by Fiji. Rapungay, penalty, deliberate knockdown. There's the referee Spanenberg against Rockini. We see it, a pass and a just professional foul, really, without a doubt. But it won't matter. This perhaps he should have got his marching orders. I quite know what the story is in sevens there, but Campisi has it. Not the greatest of passes. It's back for Tawaki. And it's just going to be booted into touch. And the referee says that is it. So Fiji. 
now on course for a semi-final date with New Zealand. That's if the New Zealanders, of course, can get past Argentina, and that may well be a huge ask. But Fiji get this one by 21 points to seven over Australia, and they're into the semi-final. New Zealand's ability to win the ball back from kickoff has been a real strength. Yeah, they've done a lot of work on their set plays throughout this tournament. Good to see them start off well and put the pressure on in the scrum here. Argentina win the ball from the scrum, and it's Felipe Contemponi who comes away with it. Pierre Gentili in there to rip the ball away. Let's see if they can get it out to Villain on the far side. This has been another one of the stars, Orengo. He turns, the pass eventually finds Villain. Now Durand is tackled on the 22. They still have it through Pierre Gentili. Baraldi, he's the captain. Pierre Gentili inside him, Baraldi again. This is a good passage of play, but it comes to an end with some solid tackling by New Zealand, and they didn't let it go, and so it'll be a penalty to New Zealand on the 22. Taken quickly by Monaghan, rushed to his left, and now Brad Fleming. He's the man with the speed, but he can't get past Bellin. Rush doubling around, kick ahead into the end goal area, rush the try! Argentina say he didn't get it down, but rush has been awarded the try New Zealand in front after a minute and a half. Fantastic individual effort here from Eric Rush. There wasn't anything on when he got the ball from Fleming. Decided to have a go, put the chip kick ahead. Got all the speed in the world. Lovely dive, and he got it down. I don't know what the Argentinians were complaining about. That's a fair try to Eric Rush. When Eric Rush kicks a football, very few people know where it's going to end up. He's not one of the greatest kickers in the world, but he couldn't have landed that one in a better place. Now, Tony Monaghan from wide out. Trying to convert his captain's try. Got the kick nice and high, and it is just away. So New Zealand lead 5 0, but that's a good start after two minutes in the last of the Cup quarterfinals. Rush tends to hold himself back until it gets to the business end of the tournament. Likes to play within himself and just direct operations for the New Zealand side over the first few games. And you find he starts to rise to the occasion on the final day. Another good restart. Scrimmager again knocks it down. This is very good football from New Zealand. Fleming with the chance to go around the outside. This time steps away from Villain. Just got a tap on him. This is Ruud to Puki, who's got a brilliant sidestep. He's held up now. But New Zealand, as always, have numbers and support. Rush goes into play halfback. New Zealand get penalised. Argentina take it quickly. Try to open something up to Orengo on the right. He's going to have Rush on, but Eric Rush gets him. The pass, though, finds the man. The kick into the end goal area. Villain is flying. Scrimmager has to get back. The ball doesn't bounce for Villain. Picked up by Tanana. Away it goes to Scrimmager. Up to the 22 he goes. Has his man on on the outside. That's a brilliant tackle from Felipe Contemponi. Ball loose, and Monaghan scragged his man, but in fact the penalty's gone the other way. Tony Monaghan a little lucky there after that breakout from Owen Scrimger. And here we see Scrimger releasing the ball well, and there the little toe through from an Argentinian player. I think you'll find that the, the penalty's there. Now, Scrimger just held up there as he went to play the ball again. I think that's what the penalty was all about. Here's Tupuki with the step, up towards halfway. He's got Rush with him, doesn't need him. Brilliant from Rua Tupuki. He could sidestep a barn door, this man. Either way, Te Rua Tupuki scores for New Zealand. I'm looking forward to seeing this one again, Tony. Rua Tupuki has shown us throughout this tournament what a great sidestep he had on him. One on one, and he left the guy for absolute dead. Here he goes now, gets the ball, pace off the mark, and bang, there he is. Wonderful try, great footwork, excellent skills, and he just coasts in. It's some sidestep. You see Rush coming up in support, but didn't need him. That is absolute brilliant footwork from Rua Tepuki. Monaghan's kick is over. You can see Tepuki just holding up. He's having an excellent tournament. That's his fifth try, and Gordon Titchen said beforehand, look out for this guy, he could be a real star. 12-0, New Zealand lead with two minutes to play in the first half. Argentina caused the upset last night by holding Fiji, a 
are struggling to hold New Zealand back today. Monaghan with the restart. And for the third time, New Zealand get first hand on the ball. And Pedro Bellaldi, the Argentine captain coming through, knocks it forward. But New Zealand always seem to be able to get first touch to their kickoffs. Important phase of play, the restarts. New Zealand seem to have done a lot of work on it. Monaghan with the feed. It's come out on the Argentine side, though. And Durand goes back, picks it up. Bubble ball. Tanana scoops it up. Great hands from Carl Tanana. Back in the hands of Felipe Contemponi, though. They'll try and drag him over the touchline. They can't do so. You can see Pierre Gentile in there fighting for the ball. They've got it. Durand. Fends off Tanana. Little gap opens up. Now here's a chance for Argentina. Baraldi, the captain. He has Villain inside him. Villain streaking for the line. Scores the try. Daniel Villain for Argentina. Well done, Argentina. There wasn't a lot on there from the scrum. Daniel Villain has been a hero for his team. But you can see the good work came from the captain, Justin. Yeah, excellent work. The change of direction. And here we see the last pass to Villain. Chased hard by Masarewa, but too quick in the finish. Well done, Argentina. He's been the star of the tournament, Daniel Villain. So the lead is cut. Argentina, just as it looked as though they weren't going to be able to compete, get a converted try. And it's 12 to 7. Just seconds to play in the first half. Argentina hit back. They're made of tough stuff. The men from South America, they showed that last night against Fiji, and they're showing it again against New Zealand today. Interesting to see what their ability like is like up the kickoff. Well, not one second of extra time played. In fact, the referee beat the man on the hooter to the jump. So at halftime, New Zealand lead by 12 to 7. John Mill blows the whistle. The kick has gone too far. Touch judge on the far side ruling that it bounced over the touch line. I think the New Zealand players thought it might have gone on over the or gone over on the full. Hasn't been the case. Let's have a look at it. Masarewa let it bounce, and it bounced just in the field of play. Scrimmager wins the line out. Masarewa rushed with the big throw to Nana. On to Tupuki again. Brad Fleming steps inside Villain. But Villain hangs on. Tanana backs off, thrown into touch. Good defence from Argentina. It's that man Daniel Villain again. They've taken a quick throw, Argentina. But the referee called them back. This is good defence. Crowding the man out on the touchline. New Zealand trying to get the ball wide early to Fleming to give him some room. As yet hasn't been able to get around his man. Manuel Contemponi with the line out. He gets the throw. Loses possession, does he? No, he got the hand off. No, the referee says he did lose it forward. So that's a, a bad mistake, just as they'd won possession from Manuel Contemponi. This man, Contemponi Brothers. You might find that's the other one on the ground. Felipe Contemponi has taken a knock. He's in 12 7 ahead. A minute and a half into the second half. In fact, it's Duran who was down, Martin Duran the line out work that's where the nudge forward came Monaghan puts it in I think there's a little boot in the eye there accidental Rua Tapuki now on the ball there's that step again hand off to Tanana he's got Fleming with him goes inside to Rush instead Eric Rush has he got the speed to go all the way you bet he has Go back to Tapuki again. That wonderful sidestep of his. Half by broke the line, and then the support from Tanana. Here we see Tanana summed up the situation well. Drew the last man rush, pushed him off, and he did right. He's got plenty of pace to burn. Well done, Eric Rush. He's a great sevens player. He has the instinct of being in the right place, in the pocket. They call it riding shotgun, looking for the short pass inside. The options were all there for the New Zealanders. Rush, you can see him coming more and more to the fore as the tournament goes on in New Zealand. Out to 19-7 now. Almost three minutes into the second half.
Zealand, Waisali Sarevi for Fiji. Tony Monaghan will kick off for New Zealand. Graham Bowen leaves the arena and attention focuses back to the middle of the ground. The semi-final between New Zealand and Fiji. Scrimmager up gets the first hand on it. It's an untidy one, but Tanana picks it up nicely for New Zealand. Flung to the ground, but falls the right way. Rush goes in looking for it. Scrimmager on his right, looking for the play infield. Monaghan is there. Fleming with a chance to take Funenbacher on on the outside. Is he going to have the pace? Not quite. Oh, lovely run inside him from Owen Scrimmager, but he lost the ball forward. Another knock as well. So the referee will call the scrum. That almost worked for Owen Scrimmager. Nice little pop pass from Fleming. He just tried to get around the outside. Couldn't quite. You can Unlucky. see Scrimmager express his disappointment there. I think a try was on. He goes down in the scrum. Fiji looked to clear from Lokini. Sarevi picks it up. He's down from the 22. Masarewa on him. Space for Vunembaka on the left. Fleming comes across. Looks in field. He's closed down quickly by the New Zealand defence. Tupuki in there. They're trying to rip the ball off him. Being held up in there. Referee blows the whistle. And it's a New Zealand feat. Great defence from New Zealand. Oh, very good defence from New Zealand. They needed to make sure that ball didn't come out because just off the screen, Fijian had huge numbers out wide. Yes, what they did was they committed numbers to the breakdown at the risk of leaving wide open spaces away in field. It paid off. Rua Tupuki did great work in there. Now, Monaghan carried off the ball. Yep, free kick. Sarevi coming through. In fact, he actually points at Yope. Monaghan will take the tap in this cut-up area of the ground. You can see a lot of sand about there. They go in field and firmer footing for Rush. Little half gap there to Pocky. Can he get the step working? No. Wrapped up by the defence. He goes to ground. Rush goes in for it. Comes away on the right for Fleming. Fleming sizes up the opposite. In fact, it's Carl Tanana. Goes over halfway. Infield, scrimmager back there. Good hands from him. He'll have to take the tackle. Now Masarewa back to Monaghan. New Zealand keeping position. Now the kick downfield for Fleming to chase. Sarevi's going back sweeping, but Fleming's flying. That's the 22. Brilliantly scooped up. Sarevi's got him 10 metres out from the line. Support there from Monaghan at the breakdown. Those four players all on their own penalty against New Zealand. Didn't let it go. the bounce but Sarevi sweeps beautifully at the back Fiji close to their own goal line look for a break again running into the tackles ball comes out the New Zealand side Tanana has it back it goes to Tipoki he's going to have Rakini on steps past him through the gap brilliant try coming up for New Zealand but Rush dropped the ball now Fiji with the chance to break away here's Sarevi look out trouble Infield at Vunenbaka with the kick downfield. Now the chase is on. Vunenbaka's got it all to himself. He only needs a bounce and he's away. He picks it up. Here's the try coming up for Fiji. Almost a try for New Zealand at one end. The breakdown. Rush dropped the ball. Fiji through the flying Vunenbaka score. Here we see Eric Rush with the line open. Big tackle. The ball comes free. Cerebri in open space. Not a lot on, and there was no one back there. The long kick. Monaghan's legs are gone. You see him there behind. Couldn't, couldn't match it. Tanata comes across to cut off the kick. And an easy canter in for PG. Carl Tanana had to come across and make sure he did, get, did not get any closer than that. Well, we've already had four minutes as Sarevi with the kick has put it wide. So, Fiji strike first. Sarevi sized up the opportunity so brilliantly. And all it needed was a half-decent bounce. And this man was going to score the try. Marika Vunimbaka, his Leicester club mate, Sarevi set it up for him. And Fiji are in front. Sarevi with the restart. Melly up after it from Fiji. Masarewa knocks it down for New Zealand. Monaghan grabs it. Rush goes in looking for it. Knows that New Zealand bombed the try down the other end. Tanana puts on a bit of speed. Tupuki loses it. New Zealand in trouble here. Fleming knocks it away downfield. But the referee will call them back. 
FBG can't make anything out of that. If anyone can, this man can. It's Sarevi. Away into the corner he goes. Beautifully done by the little master. Fiji on fire. Out it goes into centre field. Rocchini away to Melli. Monaghan comes across, but he won't stop him. Great it's try. All going right for Fiji. And it's all going wrong for New Zealand. Well, why Sali Sarevi? Fantastic skills. Here we see not a lot on. The sidestep beats Tanana. And here he just pulls back. Two players he gets rid of there. The long wide pass. Here we hear a big hurl. The bounce is favourable. And there they go for the corner. Monaghan, a desperate dive. Couldn't get there. That's magic. That's Sarevi at his absolute best. Every trick in the book. And then just stopping. It's pretty good, isn't it? Oh, he's <laughs> useful. And there he is with the kick off. It's a good looking kick too, but it's just going to go to the right. So New Zealand 10. So, sorry, Fiji 10, New Zealand nil. New Zealand 10 points behind. And with a mountain to climb, just one minute left in the first half. See there too, just as Melly scored the try. New Zealand on attack just looked a little bit rushed. The patience wasn't there. Now that's a bit deeper, and Masarewa has it. Fires it in field to Monaghan. This is Tanana inside the 22 to Pulki. Nowhere to go, but he steps out of that beautifully. Monaghan over the top, Tanana, but brilliantly intercepted by Wunambaka. New Zealand closed him down. But that was great anticipation from the man who scored the first try for Fiji. Comes back to Rocchini. Looking for the big pass over the top towards Melly. He's got it. He's got Sarevi outside him. Sells a dummy. Goes in field. Here's Sarevi. They won't stop him. Fiji run riot. Calmly puts it down. He looks very much in control of the situation. To Puki, so dangerous, and here we had New Zealand about to break out, wonderful intercept, and here we have the passage from Fiji, another long passer, getting it to their outside, it's really wide, Sarevi comes back on the angle, coming now, and he's gone. His own scrimmager really bought the dummy, went away to the right, you see scrimmager there just going out of shot, but in complete disarray, the New Zealand defence there. This man will reduce any defence to tatters. And New Zealand, 17 nil down. Just enough time for a little smile there from Waisali Sarevi. He's shown us his mastery. And Fiji out to a commanding 17 nil lead. Is there any coming back for New Zealand now? They're singing at the New Zealand fans. And the words are, you're not singing anymore. Sarevi, having cast a magic spell over this game in the first half, restarts for Fiji. New Zealand will need to strike back quickly. Tipoki with the step. Can't get through the break, and again, the ball's been tossed away. Here's another chance for Fiji. Close to the corner flag is Marai White. Ball goes in field, a dive, but no try this time. I think New Zealand have really got to get some players with Tipoki. Here we see the finish foot in touch but Tapuki is looking really dangerous he's made the breaks and he just can't get somebody close in support so Fijian seem to be intercepting his passes I should think they're blocking off the pocket no one able to get in close when the break is made Monaghan comes away but he's scragged and he's turned but there's a penalty against Fiji Inja hits the ball quickly 17-0 will go for touch. Now you don't see that too often. New Zealand want to get out of their own 22. And he just managed that with the kick from Tony Monaghan. Well, we've seen some great escape acts over the years, but I think it might just take the greatest for New Zealand to get out of this one. They're in a hole, and it's been ducked by Waisali Sarevi. Stringer comes to the front. Rush with the pass. Big one out to Tanana. Here's to Puki. He's looked dangerous every time he's taken the ball. He's caught this time. 15 out. And New Zealand 
lose possession, ball off the ground. Just over five minutes to play. Fiji have the feed. And really at the moment, they're looking very much like the winners of this game to go through to the final and play Samoa. When you think about it, we all went back to that drop ball with the goal line begging for New Zealand. It looked like Rush was about to score. Fiji swept down the field from the drop ball. Now can New Zealand come back? This is Kapuki. Trying to dance his way through. He's caught. And just to palm the ball back on his own side. Penalty against Fiji. But they can slow it down as much as they like now. Scrimmer takes the tap. Bit hasty there because Fleming's in a two-on-one situation. Has to come back and field. Fiji weren't back. Now Rush scampers up to the line. Takes the tap. Nasarei were with him. Goes to Monaghan. Monaghan really driven back in the tackle. Huge commitment from Fiji. Knocked forward. Nothing but nothing has gone right for New Zealand. Something tackle on Monaghan here. Didn't have a lot on. Gets driven backwards. And the ball's comes free. Turnover. It's the man who made the tackle. It's like Yolte, I think. And Bruce Ronke, the Australian Fijian, comes on. Rokini will feed the scrum. Fiji. Midway through the second half. In complete control. 17 to nil. New Zealand make a sub. In fact, they make a double sub. Damien Corona comes on along with Isaiah Tuilevu. And Rua Tupoki, who's looked New Zealand's most dangerous player, he comes to the sideline with Carl Tanana. Rokini scrambles it back to Serevi. Trying to find a hole for the player running onto the ball to come through, and that's exactly what's happening. It's Marai White taken just inside the 22. Rokke goes back, wins it for... The Fijians, but it's given away. Here's I see it to Elevu. They're not going to let him get away. The Fiji and New Zealander. Big ball out onto the right to Damien Corona. Now he's not the fastest man on the New Zealand team, but he's certainly a very clever player. He needs support. Here it is from Rush. Rush goes into the tackle of Sarevi. The support's there behind him. New Zealand have it. Fleming goes into play halfback. This is to Elevu, looking for the pass off. Go, go. Here it is to Masarewa. Corona coming through. Damien Corona, that's a great try for New Zealand. It gives them hope, faint hope, but it does give them hope. Corona was brought on for an impact. He's managed to do that. His first touch of the ball swept downfield. Here from the ensuing ruck, which he started. Here we see a lovely ball. Just holds it up. The pop pass. And here we'll see another great pass here as Corona comes in support. It's over. Clever play by the two Fijians on the New Zealand side. To Ilevu and Masarewa. Good acceleration there from Corona. Rush running onto it at pace. And you can see here, firstly To Ilevu holding it up nicely. And then the final pass from Masarewa through the legs to Corona. The kick's gone over. Damien Corona's try is converted 17 to 7 but New Zealand need to score two tries in two minutes Monaghan with the restart the ball just goes 10 metres picked up by Yope huge pass back to Serevi he can take all the time in the world but he sees a gap he's on fire and he's got it away to Vunembaka the kick ahead the chase Vunembaka's going to win it Vunembaka picks it up that will seal it for Fiji. A great victory for the world champions. Too many guns, and he's one of the biggest guns of them all. Here we see Serevi, the playmaker. Shows the outside. He's got wonderful acceleration, Serevi. The kick ahead, Monaghan. Couldn't quite match it with pace. And that has put the nail in the coffin for New Zealand. There he is again, just totally in control of his game, this game, and sets up another opportunity for his Leicester clubmate, Wunembaka, and a great kick to seal it. 30 seconds left on the clock. Fiji 24, New Zealand 7. There's Serevi, and there's his opposing number, Eric Rush, 
leaves the field. He's obviously picked up an injury. So New Zealand about to bow out. They won three Hong Kong Sevens titles in a row. They were beaten last year in the semi-finals of the Rugby World Cup Sevens, won by Fiji. And Fiji are going to confirm their status, perhaps, this year, although they've got a very tough match ahead against Samoa in the final. You wonder about the form that Serevi's in. Can anyone stop this man here? He's playing with New Zealand now. Big booming pass over the top to Ronkini. That's halfway. Steps inside Scrimger. Back in field. Ronke there. Corona comes in, gets a hand on it. Now Tui Levu. Can we see some Fiji magic from him? I see a Tui Levu. Sandwich, but gets it away. Now Brad Fleming in space. Infield goes Fleming. He's got Masarewa with him. Might have gone the wrong way. Topahima's there on the field as a substitute. Now Tui Levu. And to have Serevi on. Knocked back on the New Zealand side by Fiji in hands. Toffa Hema. They've got numbers waiting out to the right, but New Zealand seemed to want to riff it up the middle. Master Ray were there. The hoot is gone. But the referee may call play to continue. Fiji 24, New Zealand 7. New Zealand look to be out on their feet at the moment. Yeah, they do. They look really fatigued. This Fiji inside have really stepped it up from where they were yesterday. And they look at the class act that they were last year. The fitness was supposed to be one of the key weapons for the New Zealand side, but look, just pure adrenaline has seen the Fijians really outpace them, outlast them. Tui Levu trying to conjure something up. They've lost the ball. Hacked away into touch. That should be it. It is. It's all over for New Zealand and Fiji into the final to meet Samoa. What a match that should be. And no question after this emphatic 24-7 victory that Fiji are on course again. What a match we should see, though, when Fiji meets Samoa. They've outpointed New Zealand completely in the semi-final. The final between Samoa and Fiji. These two look the most impressive. Can they take out their second championship after beating Fiji in 1993, 14-12? Or will Fiji, the world champion, take up? Australia, and have also called in the reserves on Isaiah Tuilevu from the New Zealand team. Well, Tony, I was privileged enough to be here. Referee Ross Mitchell. That's what it's all about. The cup for the Hong Kong Sevens. England and Fiji a couple of years ago. Manu Samoa. The challenge has been laid down to the world champions by the team from Samoa. The final of the 1998 Hong Kong Sevens. Fiji will kick off. They will play towards the south stand. What a final this could be. A repeat of the 1993 final, which was a sensational match. This is what the crowd have been waiting for all day. Ball goes over the touchline on the far side, and the Fijians will throw to a line-out, an area I feel they should have an advantage. They certainly have height on the Samoans. See Ralke, the Australian, the ring-in, going straight to the front of the line-out. Yope at the back. presence felt the Fijian now Serevi the switch to the left Rolke giving him plenty of action early on in the game Serevi stepping dancing probing then falling back and looking for opportunities outside of Rokini Vonumbaka holding it up now the run through the center Fiji close to the line tackle coming in from Samania 
Now the ball away on the left where Fiji have a huge advantage. Sarevi stepping, all got greedy. Held up short of the line. There were two men outside. Sarevi on that occasion. The try's been bombed and now Fiji have to go back to halfway. The run from Maraiwai. It's a good one too. Samania comes at him again. The kick ahead into the end goal area. Touchdown for the dropout from the 22. Well, some wonderful last-ditch defence from the Samoan players here. You don't often see Sarevi make a mistake that close to the line, but he hung on to the ball too long, and the knock forward from Rokini allowed the Samoans to come away. You didn't see in that shot whether there are two unmarked men outside by Sali Sarevi. Risky stuff here. Fijians could have their hands on it. No, it's the Samoans who come away. It's Satiti holding it up on the 10-metre mark. Infield to Filippo. Hackey's coming in from Fiji. There was a knock forward in there, so it'll be a scrum. Yes, it was from a Fijian hand, and uh, the Samoans getting away with it a little bit here. I just get the feeling that they've suddenly had a, a bout of stage fright. They, they suddenly don't look the fluid team that we've seen. But there's only one team in this competition that hasn't had stage fright at this stage, and that is the Samoans. Everyone else have had a taste of it. New Zealand, Fiji, Australia, the Samoans throwing possession away though. Rokini in there battling for it for Fiji. Now you can see the intensity start to lift. Real bodily contact there. Chance on the right, Maraiwai popping it up. Roll K. Here it goes to Budenbaka. He scores and Fiji are in front. was classic sevens rugby making space for the man out wide Wurnenbacher gets it here's where it started after the intercept just uh, the way they run off the ball is so nice there they knew that they had an overlap and it was only a question of using it Wurnenbacher has been such a potent force this was the turnover and uh, that was from Rokini the Samoans will rue that turnover. Good work from Yope. He went in there and ripped it away. Maraiwai there. Nice little top pass. Quick hands from Wolke. And this man has been so hard to stop throughout the tournament when given half a chance. Marika Bunimbaka. He scores the try. The kick's gone over. Now Sarevi tries a quick one from the kickoff. And he's got it away to Wunenbaka. Here's the kick ahead. He specializes in this. He's got great pace, but the touchline beats him. This was a great restart kick from Fiji. And it's uh, one of the neglected areas of the sevens game. If you can win back restart ball, you've got a very good chance of putting points on the board. So dangerous, Wunenbaka. The Samoans have it from the line out. Samania puts the kick ahead. Fiji have to go back towards halfway. Maraiwai toes it in field. There's Sarevi, one way, then the other. Gets past Satiti, breaks. He's got numbers left and right. Could be another one coming up for Fiji, but the pass was bombed. It went forward. And it was from Bruce Rauke, and that was an unforced error. There was a try for the taking here. Bruce Ronke started off to the Australians in this tournament. He's been drafted into the Fijian side with injuries affecting them. He was on the bench in the last game, the semi-final win over New Zealand. Now he's playing. They've given him plenty of work in the early stage too. Fiji making mistakes but still leading 7-0 after five minutes. Pai puts it in for Samoa. Tries to scramble it clear. Messy stuff. The Fijians bursting through. But the Samoans come away with it. Over the top it goes to Samania, infield, the kick ahead, now the chase, Sarevi has to go back, I lost, Samania's got great speed, Sarevi saves the day, ball on the deck, he's picked it up, good support from Maraiwai, just outside the 22, he loses it forward. The hands aren't quite so soft now. Well, it's amazing. One of the uh, trademarks of Fijian rugby is the handling. And uh, just to drop a ball there under no real pressure, uh, Anoki Maraiwai must wonder what's going on. But there was a beautiful piece of work at the back by Sarevi, who released the ball and knew that if uh, he wasn't released, the penalty would go to his side. I.e. picks it up, tries to wriggle through a gap. 
Picked up by Sarevi. More trouble. Yope caught on halfway. Big hit from Matoyo. And the Samoans have it back. This is Filippo. Scrag just short of halfway. And the referee will bring them all the way back for a knock on. And the one thing that, Sa that Samoans are doing is stopping the ball carrier. When they're one on one, they make sure they hang on to the guy. We've seen the Fijians get away with a lot in the previous rounds. It's not happening here. They're not content to just tackle them either. They're putting big hits on them. And that's where some of the turnovers are coming from. I.e., on the wraparound. Flat pass, not a good one. They've got them into a lot of trouble. It's a TD on it now. Ducks under a high one, turns. A lot of space in front of him. Here's an equaliser coming up. Corsamani is away. for the Samoans. Tua Samania scores the try. He'll have the kick now to put them back on level terms. Over it goes. It's seven all in the final. Well, that was an amazing try because the Fijians were going backwards at 100 miles an hour. But suddenly, that uh, ball taken straight up the middle by Simo Sititi just opened up the defence. There was only one man left. He drew Sarevi and gave the scoring pass. Simple rugby by the Samoans, and that might just settle the nerves. Paul Samania, the most experienced player in this team, probably. The most points scored in the tournament by an individual. 69 of them. Yope goes up to try and battle for the kickoff possession, but Tua Samania has it again. Here's Ae. He's like lightning, this little fellow, but his kick's been partially blocked. And now Bunambaka could threaten. Samania goes back, tries to scoop it up. He's got it now. Up to halfway. Back and field the support from Matoyo. One out the back door, but it's been picked up by Roque. The pass in field, and Fiji have another one. Scores the try and Fiji are back in front. Well, Samo will be kicking themselves here because this was uh, brainless rugby just to fling the ball away like that after they've done so much hard work. And uh, finally, ranging up was uh, Tuakabe. Yope, Tuakabe gets the try that puts Fiji back in front. Sarevi taking his time about coming up to the kick. Just a little bounce to test the turf. Comes to stretch it now. Over it goes. 14 to 7. Fiji back in front. Sarevi brings up 52 points for the tournament, converting the try by Yope to Nkambe. This man here used a lot as a power forward, but as quick as anyone in the team. ZG back in front. There's about 30 seconds to go in the first half of the final. Very high kickoff. Gap opens up to us. Amania goes through it. Up towards halfway he goes. Support on the inside. He goes around Sarevi. Bunenbaka gets him. Heroic defence from Bunenbaka. And a penalty. Scooping it up off the ground in the tackle. Oh, that's very sad because Samania had done so much right and then he forgot that he had to get back to his feet before he played the ball. Wonderful burst of acceleration that took him past Sarevi, but Vunim Barker's pace to get back in defence. Now here, he's got to get back to his feet. He didn't, it's a penalty. Call made by referee Ross Mitchell. 14 to 7 it remains. Not too many get past Sarevi for sheer speed. He looks a bit annoyed with himself there, but it was a lovely bit of acceleration and the swerve from Tua Samania. Almost produce a try, and it took a great tackle from Inoki Maraiwai, who's fast becoming the star of this final, to pull him back. There's Samania reflecting on what might have been. Now here's Sarevi, waits for the bounce. He's always got time to do what he wants to do, though. Yope flings, that's gone forward. The referee hasn't picked it up. And it could be more trouble now for the Samoans as Ronke goes away. Interception, the flag goes up though. He'll have to come back. Touch judge.
watch as flag is up. I feel there was a forward pass in there. Very clearly in touch, the uh, Samoans argued the toss there with the referee, but uh, he made his point very forcefully. Half-time whistle has not gone. Everyone else seems to think it has. I didn't hear the hooter, but it looks like it is half-time. It is indeed. So at half-time, a pulsating final. Fiji leads Samoa 14 to 7 in this all Pacific Islands final. Samoa storming through the draw, qualifying top after the pool play, breezing through the semi-finals, the quarter-finals before that. Fiji have done it tough to get here. They had to beat Australia and New Zealand along the way. And now there's just 10 minutes left in this tournament. Fiji looking to add the sevens title to the World Cup title they won last year. Having to go back and handing the ball off to this magician, Waisali Sarevi. Just trying to bring a bit of composure back into their game, the Fijians. But losing possession inside the 22, Samoa will get a throw to the line-out, an early chance to attack. Good hurrying by the Samoans. They're not over-committing men to the tackle. Every tackler is doing his job, which is stopping the ball carrier. Satiti at the back of the line-out for Samoa. The captain by Suai towards the front. Looks like they'll lift by Suai. And out it goes into the back line. Samania just on to Filippo. Coming up, Mbaka makes the tackle, but it's created a bit of space. This is Samania. Stepping in field, nice run, support from Filippo, caught just short of the line. Fiji and scamper away through Rokini, gets it away to Vunambaka. This is dangerous stuff in the in goal area. Now Vunambaka tries to put the kick ahead downfield, picked up by Samoa, referee's whistle's gone. Penalty goes against Samoa, chance for Fiji to relieve the pressure. And boy, what pressure. Well, the Fijians would have had their hearts in their mouths when they saw Wunenbarker kick in that circumstance in such a way. And the penalty goes to Fiji. They've opted for the kick. And will it go across the touchline? Yes, just. Quick throw taken by Ai. The referee's not happy with that. Well, he's forgotten that uh, it was a penalty. Therefore, the put into the line out does not go to Samoa. It goes to Fiji. Just in the heat of the moment. Sometimes players can forget that. This will happen a couple of times yesterday. So, Kawake will throw on the left. That's the halfway line. 14 to 7 with 8 minutes to play in the final. Ball at the front for Fiji. Rokini with the big pass. Pulled down by Serevi. Rokini makes the run around. Puts on a bit of gas too. Kick into space. Read well by Ai. He's got a great step on him, this little chap, but he loses the ball. And he can't believe it. He was so brave there. He ran full tilt into that ball, knowing that he was likely to get hit very hard indeed. But then he just lost his composure. Orini Ai is a very clever player. He's played age group rugby for New Zealand. He usually plays fullback. Here he is on the Samoan side. He's putting a big impact on things. Now here he is to hustle the Fijians, Serevi squeezes out of a tackle but loses the ball, the referee will have to blow because no one's really taking an advantage here in fact he doesn't think there was a knock on at all Fiji knock it forward, Serevi there, the referee rules that that wasn't deliberate We've seen a lot of players penalised for that sort of thing throughout the tournament not Serevi you've got to wonder whether that was deliberate if that wasn't deliberate, what was? Yeah, I quite agree. He's got away with that. Just because it's Serevi doesn't mean to say he can't break the rules. Fijians get one against the feed. And a chance to Rokini. Straightening up as Marai White. Looking for support. Ball stripped away from him by Satiti. Referee playing advantage. And it's an advantage that could produce points for the Fijians. Here's Marai White. All he has to do is pick it up and stroll over. That could be a killer blow for Fiji. Well, they'll be thinking about that penalty now with the Samoans, and I also felt that the ball coming back on the Fijian side from the scrum was due to foot up from their hooker. So the Samoans were really not uh, at home when it came to that kick through, and uh, brilliant follow-up by Marai Wai. He didn't panic, he allowed the ball to bounce and scored a very important try. Now, that is what we're talking about. Was that a deliberate knock-on? If it was, it should have been a penalty against Serevi, not a scrum. 
maybe he was just snatching it to try and grab it. Hard to say. The referee's got to make a spot judgment. And gave the benefit of doubt to Serevi there. Fijians perhaps might have felt it would have been a harsh call if the penalty had gone against him. So Serevi will try and convert. That try by Inoki Maraiwai that takes Fiji out to a 21 points to 7 lead. In fact, he has converted. In the meantime, Malaki Koloa Matangi leaves the field. He's taken a knock on the sweep. Three converted tries to the Fijians against one by Samoa. Sarevi with the restart. Samoans take it down. Chance out on the left now for Aloha Samania. He's got real gas, but so's the man chasing him. Vunembaka can't get him this time. Had him, let him go, and Samania's going to score the try. Oh, but why did he dive? He had no one between him and the posts. He's got the try, but in his excitement, he's failed to take the ball around behind the posts, and that could be a very big mistake. Well, I can only imagine that the reason he didn't was he was absolutely out on his feet because he'd done so much to score that try. And I'm sure that he, he thought he heard hoofbeats coming behind him. There were none, as you say. And uh, if he'd taken it around under the post, it would have been a simple conversion. As it is, it's going to be very difficult. Well, his teammates were screaming at him, but it's very hard to hear anything in this ground. The stadium creates such a noise. Now, Tor Samania has a hard job from out on the sideline. Here's his attempted conversion. Flagged away. It's 21 to 12 and about four minutes to play. Well, it's all about heart from here on, and there's an example of it, breaking the tackle and still having the pace and power in those legs to stretch all the way to the try line. And he looks out on his feet, but he's got four minutes to go. He's had a great tournament. That was his 10th try, as you can see. Tour Samania with the restart. They do have to get their hands back on the ball some more because they've got to score twice they've got about three and a half minutes to do it they're still in the contest but i'd imagine they really would like to score a try in the next minute or so to give themselves real heart filippo in center field to a samania flat pass forward pass in fact to ie Hasn't made many mistakes in this tournament. There's one for Tor Samania. And that's the effects of fatigue. That uh, is just about a loss of concentration because he's very tired indeed. And a fair bit of chasing to do. Now, Kenny puts it in for Fiji. Doesn't waste any time. Scrappy ball brilliantly picked up by Serevi. Under all sorts of pressure. But he's chucked the pass away. And now Samania toes it forward. The race is on. He's got it. Two tries in the space of a minute for Ayala Samania. Samoa storm back into it. That has brought the whole stadium to its feet. This was wonderful play by Serevi until then. He didn't see Samania coming, and Samania has got some real gas. He stormed up to score the try. Brilliant stuff. His 12th. The conversion is good. It's 21 points to 19 with two minutes to play. The final has produced everything that this huge crowd could have imagined. What drama. Two minutes to play. Samania's 11th try, Tua converted, and now he restarts. Has the momentum swung, Fiji have it. Big pass across field from Serevi. Looks like Tui Levy's on the field now for the Fijians. Wunenbaka trying to hold things up. And a penalty goes against Tua Samania, didn't stay on his feet. Dived forward, tried to play it on the ground. Serevi. Got Tawaki outside him, bypasses him. Now Rokini streaking down the right wing side. Kaloa Matangi goes after him, he beats him. The support is there. Fiji surging forward, this will be the winner. It's the ring in 
from Australia, Ruth Ronke, who gets the try, and that will wrap it up surely now for Fiji. Well, I always used to say, if you're going to have a rigger, you better make it a good one. And that is the most important try of the entire 1998 Hong Kong Sevens. Beautiful burst down the right-hand side. The missed tackle allowed the space for Round K to put it under the posts, and doesn't he love it? The kick's gone over. What a tournament Bruce Ralke has had. He was the star of the Australian team, and now he's had a cameo role and a star cameo role for the Fijians in the final. 28 to 19, just seconds remaining, and Fiji are about to do it again. This will be their eighth title. There it is, the hoot up. The referee looks at his watch. He's the sole judge. Looks like Sarevi's keen for one more. Last chance to dance, perhaps. Taken down by Talia Foa, i.e. picks it up. Sort of Samoans would love to finish with a flourish, i.e. Down the middle he goes, ran away from his support. Now the support arrives by Suai, the captain goes in to help. Ball dropped, Filippo lost possession. The referee blows the whistle and Fiji have done it for the eighth time. What joy for Fiji. The undisputed champions of sevens rugby. They won the World Cup last year. They came back to add the sevens title from Hong Kong this year. Go Fiji, go. They've gone all right. They've gone great guns and they've won it again. What a final. What a victory for Fiji. 28-19, a pulsating final. It was in doubt up until a couple of minutes from time. But that try by Raonke has sealed it for Fiji. That's why they call it the Magnificent Sevens, a great final, played in great spirit and a great performance by Sarevi and the world champion Fijians taking out the Hong Kong Sevens for a record eighth time. We'll take a break on three sport, be back with the presentation and wrap up a magnificent tournament as the Bulavanaka, the team from Fiji, celebrate the victory. Disappointment for Samoa, but what a great weekend it's been. Well, it's been a magnificent weekend here for the 1998 Credit Suisse first Boston Hong Kong Sevens, and there is the cup. And it's going to be Waisali Sarevi, who's twice been the player of the tournament, who'll be accepting on behalf of the world champion Fijian team, who've made it a record eighth victory. But I tell you what, it's number eight, Vinabaka, who should be the player of the tournament. He's been outstanding over the last three days. Sensational speed. And in the end, when it got down to the big games, it was the big players from Fiji that had too much speed, power, and skill. And unfortunately for Samoa going through undefeated, cracking under pressure for putting on a great display with the Samoa war dance to the big crowd here at Hong Kong. And they'll take home the runners-up check of $80,000 US and well-deserved too. A fine performance by Samoa making the final. They couldn't quite repeat that performance back in 1993 when they won with a 14-12 victory over Fiji. But tonight, Fiji, too good. Also knocking off New Zealand in the semi-final and Australia in the quarter-final. So the world champion showing their class. And the big crowd here in Hong Kong just love the great showmanship and the sportsmanship that's been on display over the last three days. And it really has been a fantastic crowd too. They've had a lot of fun. Festival spirit. But there's been no fights. It's just all been good fun. And that's part of the magic of the Hong Kong Sevens. So now the lap of honor for the Samoan team. They went into the final as the top try scorers that scored the most points. They had looked the most impressive, but unfortunately they just couldn't quite handle that pressure of the Fijian team who really turned it on. The other winners tonight, Morocco taking out the bowl championship. 
of course, Korea did fine in winning the plate championship. Disappointment for New Zealand tonight, being knocked out. But of course, they were knocked out by the champions after all, Fiji in the semi finals. So the bands are on. And in just a moment, we'll have the presentation of the Cup Championship for 1998 here at the Hong Kong Sevens. There's the Fijian team at the moment. They really pulled out all the big stops. Of course, this time last night, they had been held to a 21-all draw by Argentina. And many thought that their crown as the kings of seven-a-side rugby in the world had slipped. But man, did they come back and they picked it up again today. Waisali Sarebi, no doubt, will be going back to his full-time contract in Leicester, along with Vinabaka. But at the moment, he's once again the king of sevens rugby in the world, and deservedly so too for Fiji. They really played fantastic stuff. And the big games where it mattered today Beating Australia in the quarterfinals, New Zealand in the semi-finals, and going through to knock off the top seed Samoa in the final for 1998. It's been a magnificent weekend on three sport. There is the Champions Cup, a record eighth victory for Serevi and the world champion Fijians. We won it here last year as the World Sevens. New Zealand came back as the defending Hong Kong Sevens. So he grabs his daughter. Now he's going to head up and grab the cup again. Tony Johnson, it's been a magnificent performance by Fiji because they really pulled out all the big guns when they had to. Certainly did, and the biggest gun of all, the littlest man on the field, by Stali Sarevi. He's been the magician again. He's been the man of the tournament. Looks like he might win the trophy, the player of the tournament for the third time. Clint, I, I can't think of anyone else who would have been number eight. Maybe, but I think Sarevi has run the show. Bunimbak has provided the finishing touches. Also some great defence today. But they would not have won this tournament without Sarevi. Oh, and for sure. There he is with his daughter. First time ever he's brought the family with him. What a proud moment for him. She probably doesn't know quite what it's all about. But this man does. He's done it so many times before. So it's going to be a record eighth time as Fiji become the champions of the 1998 Hong Kong Sevens. <laughs> Is anyone going to be better than this guy at seven aside rugby in the future? Hard to see, isn't it? I mean, there's been some real star performers. I think Toa Samania has had a great tournament for the Samoans. Arini Ai, to me, looks like a player who could be a seven star of the future. And uh, Ruot Tafoki for New Zealand, he had a very good tournament as well. But over the years, we've talked to Cam Pizzi was a great sevens player. Eric Rush has been one of the greatest sevens players of all. But this man, to me, stands alone. Yes, it's been a magnificent payday for the Fijian team, the world champions, once again the Hong Kong champions. On behalf of Tony Johnson, I'm Clint Brown and the rest of our three-sport commentary team here in Hong Kong. We certainly hope you've enjoyed our coverage. Thanks for joining us. Good night. Wulavanaka. Ni samote. There's the uh, organising committee of the Hong Kong Rugby Football Club. They've done a fantastic job once again and really has been a magnificent tournament and a fine effort by the um, Samoan team to get through to the grand final again. Proud moment for the Fijian coach. They really do specialise in seven-a-side football. Of course, they've been a bogey team for the New Zealand team and also for Australia over the years. Every time New Zealand go for the Super Sevens, they struggle to win. And the big crowd here tonight really appreciative. It's fantastic too that for the first time the tournament organisers have been able to offer over half a million dollars US in prize money. BG taking that check for $120,000 which will be great for the team fund. So no doubt everyone watching back in Suva, Mandy and BG will be celebrating big time. Congratulations. Another proud day for the Pacific Island nation of BG. Savanaka, as they would say. So Morocco 
take out the bowl. Korea take out the plate. But it's Fiji who take home the cup. take away the bowl for the first time they're an improving nation Korea won the plate for the fourth time and Fiji the cup for the eighth time